Let's talk about cataracts, which are actually very common. 68% of the population over 80 years old have cataracts. So it's a big deal. And cataracts are a problem with the lens of the eye, where the lens becomes opaque and you can't see through it. And so before we get into what to do about it or how to prevent it or what to do if you have it, it's very important to understand what is so unique about this lens. It's actually quite fascinating. It's a piece of tissue that is extremely robust, okay? It has no blood supply, no lymphatic system. It repairs very, very fast. It even has its own unique immune system. It's called immune privilege, which basically makes it less immune responsive, especially to what's going on to the rest of the body. If you have grafting going on or some type of transplant of your lens into your eye, it's very unlikely that you're going to be rejected as compared to getting other organs donated into your body, your immune system will attack them right away. And so your body really considers this lens very, very important for survival, because if you can't use the lens and you can't see, you don't survive very well. And so the reason why we probably don't have blood vessels is because we can't have blood vessels because they would obstruct our vision. But the lens has a very unique type of protein that is different from the rest of the body that is just this transparent uh, protein. And the lens also is attached to a muscle that allows the shape of the lens to be changed. So this can affect your ability to see. So it works with the adaptation mechanism to be able to see far and near. The lens of the eye typically has an incredible ability to suppress inflammation. So why do we get cataracts? The primary reason is something called glycation. Okay, Glycation is a term to describe the combining of sugar with a protein or the combining of sugar with a fat. When that happens in the body, this protein becomes unusable. And so the more that this glycation occurs in the lens of the eye, the more problems you're going to have. And this is why diabetics are way more at risk for cataracts than the rest of the population, because they constantly have a higher amount of sugar running through their bloodstream. And so that tells you right there what kind of diet you should be on, a low sugar, low carb diet. There are other factors that increase the risk of cataracts. Of course, aging, which you really can't do anything about the chronic use of steroids, like in prednisone, things like that. If you think about steroids in general, what that does is that puts your body into a state where you're going to be uh, using a lot more sugar. So steroids can easily make you a diabetic because they raise your blood sugar. So that could be the mechanism with that, but also steroids cause the immune system to be paralyzed and they shut that down and they get rid of all inflammation. And so that can negatively affect the person if they have this chronic exposure to steroids or even stress. Because when you go through stress, you have high levels of cortisol. Other things like alcohol, smoking, and even exposure to microwaves. So if you're cooking with the microwave and you're looking in the microwave or you're around where that uh, those microwaves are going into your eye, that can uh, destroy proteins in your lens as well. And the smoking and the alcohol and the junk foods and the chemicals and all that over time can create a lot of oxidation. Now, the lens of the eye has a lot of uh, protection against oxidation because it has a lot of antioxidants. It has a tremendous amount of glutathione. So then that brings up this topic of oxidative stress. What is oxidative stress? Well, you have this imbalance of too much oxidation or free radical damage, which destroys uh, the molecules of things and not enough antioxidants. When you have that imbalance, then you get cataracts. And of course, being a diabetic or eating on a sugar really puts you in a state of a lot of oxidation. So all that sugar flowing through the blood vessels or into the eye creates a, a major rusting effect, okay? Or an oxidation effect. Based on that information, what can you do? Well, number one, start doing intermittent fasting immediately, okay? That's gonna reduce the glycation effect of that lens, okay? Number two, start to build up this glutathione, start to build up the antioxidant networks of the body. 
of course, at the same time, also limit the amount of oxidation in things that are creating free radical damage. And that would be like the smoking, the junk food, the exposure to um, sugar, which I've already mentioned. But as far as these antioxidants go, to build up glutathione would be very, very smart. So how do we increase glutathione in the body? Well, if you start eating foods high in sulfur, that's going to be a big step in the right direction. That would be all the, like the cabbage, the Brussels sprouts, the radish, the broccoli, all the cruciferous vegetables. And you do want a good uh, percentage of those vegetables raw because of the enzymes and antioxidants, which are greatly affected by heat. So with those vegetables, the ones that you can eat raw would be a lot better than the ones that you're going to steam or, or cook. So like big salads with maybe uh, microgreens or uh, sprouts and other leafy greens would be very, very beneficial because the leafy greens also contain lutein and zeaxanthin, which are two very powerful phytonutrients to help not only prevent cataracts, but also macular degeneration. Lutein and zeaxanthin also is in egg yolks. Okay. So egg yolks are really important too, but the deep leafy green vegetables are very important to build that up as well as building up your glutathione. Some other things that will help you build up glutathione are selenium, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, and another compound called NAC, which helps glutathione be replenished. So the question is going to be, well, are these remedies going to actually cure? And the answer is it really depends. It depends how bad it is, how long you've had it, uh, your repair mechanisms, but it can't hurt. And uh, if you take it and it doesn't work, at least it's not going to create side effects. Maybe you can create benefits in other parts of your body. But the point is I'm trying to give you the big idea of the mechanism, what you should start eating on a regular basis, uh, what you should start including in your supplements and a greater understanding what causes this problem in the first place. Now there's two other vitamins that are also very important. And I've talked about these in other videos, B1, which is thiamine and vitamin B2, which is riboflavin. And these two vitamins also not only act as an antioxidant, but they found that if you're deficient in these two vitamins, your risk for getting cataracts are much greater. Now, since we're on the topic of antioxidants and oxidation and glycation, if you haven't seen this video on what to eat to actually minimize this glycation from your blood sugars, I put that video up right here. Check it out.